Good morning. I am Dr. Simi Zaran Sleba from the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. Welcome to the first part of the lecture series on Module 5 of the course VLSI. In this lecture, we will be covering read-only memory, abbreviated as ROM. Let us begin with a broad classification of semiconductor memories. They are broadly categorized as non-volatile and volatile memory. Non-volatile memory is capable of retaining the contents or bit values stored in it even after the power supply is cut off. Read-only memory is a category of non-volatile memory in which the values are written to it only once during the time of manufacture. Non-volatile memories like erasable programmable ROM, electrically erasable programmable ROM and flash memory can be written several times. Random access memory is a type of volatile memory which cannot retain its stored contents when the power is turned off. However, RAM will be explained in yet another lecture. Now we will be discussing about read-only memory. ROM. Basically, ROM is a memory into which bit values are stored only once, that is during manufacture, and thereafter the contents are not altered, they are only read. Consider applications like washing machine or calculator or some game machine for which the Application programs are fixed. These programs are developed and debugged and written in the ROM. When the applications are running, these programs only need reading. A bit 1 is stored in a ROM cell by connecting a diode between the word line and bit line. Conversely, a 0 is written by the absence of the diode between the word line and bit line. To read the bit 1 stored in the ROM cell, the corresponding word line is made 1, that is it is activated. Then due to the conduction of the diode, the bit line will also be charged to 1. In a cell that stores a 0, since there is no interconnecting element between the word line and bit line, the bit line will remain at the default value 0 even when the word line is activated. The disadvantage of the diode cell is that it does not isolate the bit line from the word line. So the current to charge all the bit line capacitances should be supplied by the word line. To overcome this disadvantage, the diode is replaced by the gate source connection of an NMOS transistor. Drain of the NMOS transistor is connected to the supply voltage VDD. So, when the transistor is turned on by giving a 1 to the word line, the bit line is also pulled up to VDD. So for this ROM cell, the current for charging the bit lines is supplied from VDD by the NMOS transistor. Word line is responsible for charging and discharging the word line capacitances alone. The disadvantage of this ROM cell is the larger area required for extra supply contacts. This is yet another approach for implementing 1 and 0 in MOS ROM cell. Here, bit line is pulled down to ground when the transistor turns on with a high voltage on the word line. Here, a ROM cell array for storing Four words, each consisting of four bits, is shown. Here, 
NMOS transistors in each cell have to be provided with extra VDD contact. This incurs a larger area overhead. The overhead of supply lines is reduced by sharing them between neighboring cells as shown in the figure. Each bit line is connected to ground by using pull down loads. So the default value of the bit line will be zero. A word line is activated by making it equal to one. As shown in the figure, the word line one is activated. That is WL1 is equal to one. So the transistors connected from word line one to bit line zero and bit line three turn on. So these bit lines read the value one since they are now connected to VDD. Whereas the other two bit lines, bit line one and bit line two, which are not connected to word line one, remain at the value zero. A bit line reads a value one if any one of the transistors connected to it are in the on condition. That is why this cell array is called or ROM cell array. Now, here is a question for you to determine the value of data stored at address 0, 1, 2, and 3 in this row. To retrieve the value of address 0, we have to enable or activate word line 0. So when this word line 0 is activated, the transistor connected to bit line 1 turns on. So this bit line 1 will be read as 1, whereas bit line 0, 2, and 3 will be at 0. Since there are no transistors in those cell positions. So the word stored in address 0 starting from the most significant bit is 0010. Similarly, we can find for the words at word line 1, 2 and 3 also. Now, this is an implementation of the ROM cell array in which the MOS is resistively clamped to the supply voltage by means of PMOS as a pull-up. So the default value of a bit line is 1 in this case. Absence of a MOS device between the bit line and word line means that a 1 is stored. And a 0 is stored by providing a MOS device between bit line and word line. So when a word line is high, NMOS is turned on and the bit line is pulled down to ground. Again, there is a question to determine the values of data stored at the addresses 0, 1, 2 and 3 in this ROM array, which is of NOR logic. In this ROM cell array, which uses NAND logic, the word lines are operated in reverse logic mode. That is, all the word lines are at 1 by default. And when a particular word line is selected or enabled, it has to be turned to 0. Here, NMOS transistors are connected in series in a bit line. So when all of them are on, the bit line is pulled to zero. When a word line is selected or enabled, transistors connected to it turn off and the bit line value becomes one. I hope that with this, you are familiar with the OR, NOR and NAND implementations of ROM cell array. If you have any queries, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.